Hello, welcome to Colonel O'Truth's Miniature Issues. If you've been following along, you'll know that in the last episode, I began construction of Undercrag City's South Gate. In this episode, I'm continuing. Firstly, finishing the last little touches of the battlements that I began previously, and then moving on to the mighty Dragon Door. As I previously mentioned, Southgate was designed to inspire awe and fear in the hearts of those who saw it. Legend has it that the mighty Dragon Door itself would spew flames upon anyone who tried to invade the city. I've settled on a design with the dragon's head on the door itself and wings carved into the stone columns to either side. I've designed one wing in card and cut it out as a template. I'm using this to construct matching wings either side. Firstly, I draw around the outline. Inscribing nice and deeply into the foam. And then using the wing that I've cut out, I'm able to create matching curves. This is a traditional HB pencil. As I've mentioned before, this is my preference for drawing into foam. It doesn't cut in like a harder pencil or a graphics pencil would. I'm using a straight edge to create neatly aligned stones within the design of the wing. I'll contrast these with slightly different stones outside the wing. This is styrene plastic board. Basically the same material that aircraft kits are made from. I'm constructing the door design as a pair straight onto the board. Here I've got some rough grade sandpaper and I'm taking the surface off the board all in one direction. This will give me a wood grain effect later. Preparing some thin strips for later on. The best way to work with this plastic is to score, then snap, not necessarily to cut all the way through. It breaks beautifully with just a fine score line. Now I'm drawing out the shape of the door. I'm referring to my sketch and translating it straight across. Undercrag City is a huge project that's going to take me a long time to complete. Southgate alone will probably take up three or even four episodes. If you haven't already, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. And let me know what you think in the comments also ask any questions. I really enjoy the correspondence I'm receiving. It's nice to know people are enjoying these videos. So thank you very much. Back to the gate, the dragon's taking shape. There was a lot of measurement involved here, trying to get everything nice and symmetrical. Now for some green stuff. For those who don't know, this is a two-part epoxy putty. Yellow and blue that mix together make green. It's easy to work with and when set is very, very rigid. Green stuff can be quite expensive depending where you get it from, but a little goes a long way. This combined with the plastic board probably makes this gate one of the more expensive parts of this model so far. If you've been following along, you'll know that everything else has been done on a fairly tight budget just adding little blobs of putty and starting to sculpt. 
I'm not really much of a sculptor, but this kind of relief work straight over a sketch isn't too challenging. I'm using the handle of a plastic paintbrush with a flattened end here. Not bad. Now I've drawn out the lines of the planking that will form the gate. Using a straight edge, I get the side of the blade and scrape into the plastic. I'm not cutting. This just creates a negative detail between the planks. Now I'm cutting out the gate. And I've decided that the plastic itself is too thin, so I'm double backing it. The back piece has been drawn with the same planks and the same wood grain texture as the front. With a good coating of liquid polystyrene cement, it's a perfect bond. Cutting out the second piece around the curve of the first, And now for the thin plastic strips you saw earlier. These create the iron frame and bands that reinforce the gate. I know it's a little difficult to see what's going on here. Everything's so white you can't really see much detail. I carved a groove down the middle of the dragon head while the green stuff was still setting so that it could guide my knife later. Now a very careful cut all the way down the center. And there's that nice easy snap I was talking about. More iron framing. Having pieces on the side like this adds to the impression of thickness and bulk. It will also give me something to add loops to later so that the doors will actually open on hinges. Here you can clearly see the grooves between the planks where I scraped them out with the knife earlier. I've also cut notches at the top of the gate to exaggerate the joins. Trying them for size. You'll see that the cavity inside the gate is squared, not curved like the gate itself. If the interior had a curved roof, the gates couldn't open. Now some very fine plastic tubing to create loops. You can see here that a lot of the progress I made on the gatehouse in the last video has not been made here. I'm focusing on a bit at a time. So please feel free to go back to previous videos and see what was done. Now for the clever bit. Magnets. 
there's a thin strip of wire at the bottom of both gates. The magnet will be built into the model underneath the road, so that when the gates are in the closed position, they align neatly. Now some thick balsa wood. I'm cutting hefty timbers out of these to build into the gatehouse with the intention of holding my hinges. As you'll see in a moment, I changed my mind. This sort of thing happens a lot. There's a lot of experimentation going into this model and indeed into any model. Here's the same wire that I used at the bottom of the gates for the magnet. I've got about a hundred meters of the stuff, it was cheap. Cutting reasonably long lengths and folding them into right angles. Then I'm forcing these into the model with a blob of glue. PVA doesn't really hold metal at all, but it just helps to keep things sort of firm. The foam on its own is very soft. And there's the gate hanging on the hooks. And now the magnet test. Plenty of strength there, even through the foam board. And that's where we are so far. The mighty dragon door of Southgate is taking shape nicely. I'll be getting into the other details, the portcullis and the painting in future episodes. So please keep watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.